The Xenomorph XX-121, while a fictional alien, has taken inspiration from creatures found right here on Earth. It shares traits with a variety of insects, arachnids, fish, and reptiles. The life cycle elements and abilities of the Xenomorph is a horrifying amalgam of nature's most fascinating curiosities. One possible ability, never quite fully explored, at least not explicitly, in a film, is that of regeneration. As a defense mechanism, could the alien at some point lose a limb or a tail, only to regrow this extremity later? Could its regenerative abilities go even beyond that? This is an ability observed by Ash, science officer of the Nostromo in the novelization version of Alien. Alan Dean Foster's novel has long been a source of many scenes and moments that for one reason or another don't appear in the 1979 film. One such scene takes place after the attempt to remove the facehugger from Kane, which resulted in the acidic blood melting through the flooring of the ship. The crew returns to Kane to make sure he wasn't injured from the substance and to stop any further bleeding from the facehugger. They confirm Kane's safety, and Ash takes a closer look at the creature. He observes the following. Healed over. No sign of the wound. Remarkable regenerative abilities. You'd never know it had been touched. Later on, after Brett is killed and the crew discusses possible ways to kill the creature, Ash expresses how this ability would make the task nearly impossible. You'd have to hit a vital organ with a laser on your first shot. From your description of the creature, it's now extremely fast as well as large and powerful. I think it's reasonable to assume it retains the same capacity for rapid regeneration as its first hand form. That means you'd have to kill it instantly, or it would be all over you. Not only would that be difficult to do if your opponent were a mere man, it's also virtually impossible to do with this alien because we have no idea where its vital point is. We don't even know that it has a vital point, don't you see? Can't you envision what would happen? Let's say a couple of us succeeded in confronting the creature in an open area where we can get a clear shot at it, which is by no means a certainty. We laser it, oh, half a dozen times before it tears us all to pieces. All six wounds heal fast enough to preserve the alien's life, but not before it's bled enough acid to eat numerous holes in the ship. Maybe some of the stuff burns through the circuitry monitoring our air supply, or cuts the power to the ship's lights. I don't consider that an unreasonable scenario, given what we know about the creature. And what's the result? We've lost two or more people, and ship-wise we're worse off than when we were before we confronted it. This musing from Ash would turn out to be somewhat prophetic. There is, of course, a much-discussed missing scene, only partially filmed but retained in the novel version, where the alien is almost captured in the airlock. It escapes, but not without losing a limb in the process, leaving a nasty spill of its deadly blood causing depressurization that nearly kills the remaining crew. Parker describes the scene. It caught an arm, or whatever you'd like to call it, in the closing inner door. Just pulled itself free like a lizard shedding its tail. We had the bastard. We had him. When it pulled free of its limb, it bled all over the place. The limb did. I guess the stump peeled over fast. Lucky for us. When we next see the alien, after the airlock scene, all of its limbs are intact, suggesting it can regenerate quite rapidly. These details, however, only exist in the novel version, not the actual film, so it's hard to say if this ability could be considered... official. At least, not until Ridley Scott revisited the world of Alien with his prequel films. The concept was toyed with in Prometheus, in the scene where Milburn and Fifield encounter the Hammerpeat creature, a product of the insidious Black Goo. Its head is cut clean off, and much like the Xenomorph XX121, the blood is acidic. Almost instantly, the Hammerpede regrows its head, and continues its assault, barely missing a beat. This could be a way of planting the seed, suggesting the idea that the Xenomorph could possess a similar method of regeneration. By the time Alien Covenant came along, nothing of the sort was explicitly depicted in the film with the introduction of its Xenomorph. However, on the film's commentary track, during the scene where Daniels confronts the creature on the lander, Ridley Scott offered a revelation that raised many fans' eyebrows. Here's what Scott had to say. And she's gonna crush it. You're gonna try and crush it. Cut it to pieces, but it'll probably, when it gets in the ground, will DNA back to parts and regrow. He's indestructible. Scott suggests here that the pieces of the xenomorph crushed by the lander's claw will somehow regroup and regrow the alien entirely. He's indestructible, 
reasoned Scott, and no further elaborations are made on this ability for the remainder of this commentary track. It's a pretty severe revelation to make so casually, and I'm sure there are plenty of fans who heard this and only rolled their eyes, amounting it to wacky old Ridley Scott senility, but I think this is something worth meditating on. This is something that, in one way, completely changes the way we perceive the Xenomorph and its survivability, and in another way, simply confirms suspicions we've already had since the 1979 film, especially taking into account the details from the Foster novelization. The Xenomorph XX-121 is, after all, the perfect organism. It can adapt to and survive within any environment. Its structural perfection is matched only by its hostility. It would stand to reason that this creature is just about impossible to kill. That's the conclusion Ash makes, anyway. How do we kill it, Ash? There's gotta be a way of killing it. How? How do we do it? You can't. Ripley is ultimately able to defeat the alien, but only through an incredibly specific set of circumstances and a little luck. You could interpret the fate of the alien in one of two ways, either the blast of jet exhaust from the Narcissus sent the creature flying aimlessly off into space, or if looking into further details described in the novel and in the script, it burst into countless tiny smoldering fragments. Either way, this is not an easily achievable scenario, and Ash's ominous warning of the unkillable nature of the alien stands firmly enough. It struck some fans as curious, then, that by the time the sequel came around, the aliens could so quickly and so easily be killed by the Marines' weaponry. It looked like a good headshot would be sufficient enough to render one of the creatures as good as dead. Not that they still weren't a serious threat, but it was an incredibly specific set of circumstances and some very bad luck that led to the situation with the Marines coming to grief. If it weren't for the risk of rupturing the cooling system in the atmospheric processor and having to limit their weapons, maybe they could have been able to take out the entire hive right then and there. But maybe, just maybe, there's more going on with these creatures than what we see at face value. With aliens, we're given a unique advantage and frame of mind when it comes to the amount of aliens the characters will be facing off against. We know conceptually that for this story, the threat isn't just one alien, but an entire army of aliens, raising the stakes and amping up the action elements for this sequel. But it's not a vague, seemingly unlimited number of alien monsters like, say, the Arachnids and Starship Troopers. We know, based on the population of the Hadley's Hope colony and the fact that the Xenomorph can only propagate from human hosts, that there's somewhere around 158 of these alien creatures occupying this site. This is give or take any colonists that may have died without being harvested during the initial outbreak and any additional characters that may have been included in extended universe stories, and of course, the lone surviving Newt. But the amount of aliens is roughly 150 or so when the Marines first make their way to LV-426. One question a viewer may ask themselves is exactly how many aliens were the Marines able to kill before the film's conclusion and the nuclear blast of the atmospheric processor that destroyed the colony, and presumably all the aliens within it. Were they at least somewhere close to exterminating all of the aliens on their own? A devoted fan may even watch the film with a close and critical eye to try to determine an alien body count. There are plenty of confirmed kills on screen, undoubtedly dead aliens, and plenty of instances where you can make a fair enough assumption that an alien or two has been killed. Ultimately though, a task like this is one in vain, since the number certainly doesn't amount in the hundreds, and for all the chaos and bad luck that ensues for the survivors, they may as well be facing off an infinite number of alien foes. But what if there's a good reason for this? What if the aliens in Aliens do in fact possess the regenerative abilities that Ridley Scott refers to in his Alien Covenant commentary? Needless to say, we don't outright see anything to suggest this, but it could be all happening off-screen. Every single alien that was taken down in the Hive may have been riddled with bullets, blown to pieces, and apparently killed, only to regenerate and appear with the others later in their pursuit of human prey. That would mean the number of aliens seems endless because, in a way, it is. Unless they're completely obliterated down to the last molecule, they're just going to keep regrouping and coming back. This is a pretty terrifying notion, and given what we know of the alien, and with the comments Ridley Scott has made about its abilities, I really don't think it's entirely out of the question either. I suppose it may all depend on how much of an authority you happen to consider Ridley Scott on the nature of the creature. If you take his comments to heart, then maybe this is something to keep in mind the next time you watch Aliens. It also means that somewhere on Planet 4, there remains a Xenomorph. 
Maybe this was something Scott was planning to revisit when there had been talk of multiple more film entries after Alien Covenant. Maybe it's something that still could be explored. But I'd love to know what you think about the possible regenerative abilities of the alien. Can it regrow its limbs? Can it regenerate completely? Share your thoughts in the comments below. As always, I'd like to thank you very much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like, and be sure to subscribe for all the latest from Alien Theory. A very special thanks goes out to Alisane, Queen Tier of the Patreon Hive. If you'd like to join the Hive and support the channel, check out my Patreon page for exclusive posts and contests. In the meantime, you can catch up with Alien Theory over social media. Follow at Alien underscore Theory on Twitter and at Alien Theory YT on Facebook and Instagram for more. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.